On April 5, 1975, Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger made its television debut on Japan's NET TV. The series centered on five members of the Eagle Defense Force and their battle against the Black Cross Army and their mask monsters. Over the course of its 84 episode run, Go Ranger became a rating success and pop culture phenomenon that would lead to a follow up program featuring another group of colorful heroes fighting against another evil empire, Jakka Denkekitai. Unlike its predecessor, this new series failed to get high television ratings. This is due to a more serious narrative tone and a focus on secret agent style storylines. Despite a format change and the introduction of a new team leader, Big One, the show ended its run on December 24, 1977 with episode 35. The promise of the format established by Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger appeared to have run its course and the potential of a new franchise that could inherit the mantle of the then dormant Kamen Rider series came to an unremarkable end. Or so it appeared until an unlikely convergence of Toei's 1977 TV series Daite Tsujin 17 and a deal with Marvel Comics would reinvent the format into something far bigger than its predecessors. Daite Tsujin 17, which premiered March 18, 1977 on TVS, centered on Saburo Minami in 17, a giant robot who fought against the artificial intelligence brain and its army of robots. It was Toei's first live action program to feature a heroic giant robot since the company's 1967 TV series, Giant Robo. And while it only ran for 35 episodes, it performed well and toys associated with the show's robots like Poppy's 1-7 Shogo King figure became popular and profitable for the company. Daita Tsujin 1-7's popularity would eventually play a role in discussions Toy's production team was having with Poppy on a new TV show featuring the American comic book hero Spider-Man. In the late 1970s, Spider-Man was not a well-known character in Japan and Marvel Comics wanted to change this through a partnership with Toei. This led to an agreement to produce a TV series based on the character but adapted for the Japanese market. As mentioned in the first episode of the Disney Plus TV series, Marble 616, for the series to be a success, it needed a lot of merchandise and only having the Spider-Man character as the basis for those products would not work. This is where Katsushi Murakami, who was in charge of toy design, stepped in with a suggestion to give Spider-Man a mothership that could transform into a giant robot that would fight the hero's powerful adversaries. They would also give Spider-Man a car. Spider Machine GP7, which would further expand the type of toys that could be sold. A flying fortress that could transform into the heroic Leopardon and a vehicle the hero could ride in and use to board the robot. These concepts that had already been proven out by Toy and Poppy would now be combined as a unique twist for the Spider Man TV series. On May 17, 1978, Six months after Daita Tsujin 17 wrapped up its TV run, Spider-Man started its TV broadcast. The series was a hit with its target audience, garnering an average TV rating of 14%, which made it the highest on Tokyo Channel 12 during its broadcast. Plus, Poppy's Shogo King Leopardon figure became a popular and successful product for the company. This combination of Toei's transforming hero formula with Daita Tsujin 17's gigant robot action became a bigger than anticipated success for Toei and its partners. With a proven and profitable concept now in the market, 
their attention would quickly turn to what to do next. Initial conversations with Marvel focused on what other characters to adapt for use in the Japanese television market. The initial concept centered around building a team of international heroes who would each represent a different country, with Captain Japan as the lead character. But as the production team refined the concept and started running into copyright and trademark problems, only a few of the original elements would make it to the final stage of production. This led to a refined concept in which the team of five heroes would use the power of dance rhythm to transform into their heroic alter egos and fuel their fighting abilities. But as camera work started, scenes where dance was blended into their fighting style didn't translate as well as anticipated. This led to the dance elements being mostly stripped out after the first episode. There were two more big changes Toei's team made before their new program would start being promoted, feeling that the American comic book inspired name of Captain Japan would not resonate with their target audience, the main hero's name was changed to Battle Japan, with that convention being applied to three of the other characters, Battle Cossack, Battle France, and Battle Kenya. The only team member to retain its comic book inspired name was Miss America. This is also the only character to incorporate design elements from Marvel Comics. This included a shield with the United States flag that was inspired by the Golden Age hero Miss America. Her costume would draw inspiration from Miss Marvel. A last minute change was the title of the program, which had already gone through multiple iterations but was only finalized when Yoshinori Watanabe, the manager of Toei's television operations, suggested the title incorporate the word Fever, which was popular at the time due to the success and influence of the American movie Saturday Night Fever. On February 3, 1979, five months after production went into high gear, Toei's ambitious new program Battle Fever J premiered on TV Asahi. A mysterious woman is traveling across Japan assassinating members of the National Defense Department by stabbing them with an umbrella tipped with cyanide. She is a member of the secret society Egos, an organization with scientific knowledge that surpasses modern civilization. They are the ones behind all uprisings in human history and are now aiming to create a new world order. In order to track her down and counter Ego's ambitions, General Kurama Tetsun summons the Battle Fever team to their underwater headquarters, Big Baser. To help them on their mission, they are each given a power suit that will enhance their individual strengths and give them access to additional powers. It's here that they are also introduced to their ultimate weapon, Battle Fever Robo. Armed with their battle suits, the team sets out on their first mission to track down the mysterious assassin and begin their counterattack against Egos. The Battle Fever team is made up of five members, each representing a different country. Masao Den is the team leader and he is Battle Japan. A former member of the National Defense Ministry, he is a skilled fighter trained in Judo and Karate. Kensaku Shira Ishii is Battle Kosak, and he is the second in command of the team. Born and raised in Central Asia, he was an orphan who was adopted by General Tetsuzan. Kensaku was eventually killed by Ego's forces, which drove his friend Makoto Jin to take on the mantle of Battle Kosak in order to avenge his friend. Kosuke Shida is Battle France. He is skilled with a fencing sword and when away from his battle fever duties, is a professional her stylist. Shiro Akebono is Battle Kenya and has the ability to understand and communicate with animals. Diane Martin is Miss America and an FBI agent whose father was assassinated by Egos and is often at odds with Shiro due to an aversion to the animals he brings to the base. After suffering an injury during a hostage rescue mission, 
Diane returns to the United States and is replaced as Miss America by Maria Nagisa, who is also a member of the FBI and previously trained with Diane's father. The Battle Fever team is led in their mission by General Kurama Tetsusan, who provides strategy and operational support. He is also a sword master and at times joins the team in battlefield to help them defeat Ego's forces. They are also supported by Nakahara and Tomoko Ueda, two spies who often help the team with support missions to uncover Ego's plots. The robotic bird, Kyotaro, also helps the team from time to time identify threats. It also likes to spar with Shiro, which leads to an adversarial but humorous relationship between the two. The secret society Egos is led by Satan Egos, a mysterious figure hidden under a black robe with the ability to create monsters that carry out the organization's many plots to throw the world into chaos. Satan Egos is supported by two field commanders. Commander Header, who would exclusively lead Egos forces through episode 19, and Salome, who previously led the American branch of Egos and would help lead their forces through the second half of the series. Battle Fever J's storyline can be broken up into three arcs. The first one, which takes place between episodes 1 and 5, centers on the construction of the team's ultimate weapon, Battle Fever Robo. As Battle Fever's mission begins to unfold, the National Defense Ministry is nearing the completion of Battle Fever Robo's construction. As the story progresses, Egos discovers their plans and devises multiple plots to steal the robot's blueprints as a countermeasure. But their efforts are thwarted and Battle Fever Robo becomes operational in Episode 5, which now allows the Battle Fever team to easily fend off Ego's giant robots. The second story arc, which takes place between Episodes 6 and 18, contains a series of stories designed to further explore the characters' backstories and personalities. They are also used to soften the tone of the series with lighter moments and more comedic elements. This includes the addition of the robot mina bird Kyotaro, which becomes a constant comedic foil for Shiro. The third story arc begins with episode 19, which introduces Salome, the strongest woman in the world and Ego's American operations leader. From this point, she will lead the organization's field operations, taking on Battle Fever's team head-on. Her efforts would lead to the defeat of Miss America and Battle Cossack and push the Battle Fever team to their limit on multiple occasions. This arc would bring Battle Fever's story to its conclusion with episode 52, The Symphony of the Heroes. In it, Salome lures the Battle Fever team into a trap inside Ego's headquarters, where their powers will be taken and fused to make an invincible monster. But Battle Fever escapes from this trap and begins their counterattack against Satan Egos. With the help of Battle Shark and Battle Fever Robo, they finally manage to defeat Satan Egos and anything that was powered by its energy. Like many of its predecessors, Battle Fever J's production history was filled with logistical and staffing challenges that the production team had to overcome during the pre production phase and while the program was being broadcast. One such difficulty centered on a pivotal component of the series, Battle Fever Robo. The inclusion of the giant robot was critical for the program sponsors and production team. This is why like Taita Tsujin 17 and Spider-Man, the introduction of Battle Fever Robo was planned to take place during the first episode of Battle Fever J. But the robot's introduction in show was delayed due to toy designer Katsushi Murakami needing additional time to iterate on the robot's final design, which also impacted the timeline for fabricating the costume that will be used to bring Battle Fever Robo to life in the series. This is why in episodes 1 through 4, Battle Fever Robo is only shown in isolated static shots or as an overlay atop other footage. The costume was not ready to be used in show until episode 5. 
This situation inspired the series' first story arc, which portrays the National Defense Ministry as working on the robot's construction in order to take on Ego's robot monsters. The series' production also had to contend with multiple challenges and changes with its cast members. The first of these was casting for the role of Miss America. In the late 1970s, the Hawaiian model Agnes Lum became tremendously popular in Japan's pop culture scene through frequent appearances in television commercials, magazines, and films. Her popularity inspired Toei's managing director, Yoshinori Watanabe, to ask the casting crew to find an American model to take on the role of Miss America. This led the team to cast Diane Martin, an American model who at the time was working as a campaign staffer at Karakuen Amusement Park, which had ties to Toei through their sponsorship of the studio's TV programs. Diane's Japanese skills at the time were limited, so her on-screen appearance was supplemented through voice dubbing performed by Lisa Kamaki, who previously performed the role of Momo Ranger in Go Ranger. In addition to serving as the voice of Miss America, Lisa also performed as the in-suit actor for Miss America for the first 24 episodes of Battle Fever J. The casting of the model as Miss America led to multiple challenges for the production that were visible during the first half of the series. Diane was often limited to appearing in group scenes in Battle Fever's underwater base with a limited number of lines to deliver. When the team goes out on missions to investigate Egos, she is mostly excluded until the team needs to transform and fight that episode's monster. When the series was extended to run for a full year, Diane's schedule also proved to be a challenge, which resulted in her being replaced by Japanese actress Naomi Hagi. This transition was written into the show's 24th episode, Piers, Diane Falls, in which Diane passes on the Miss America battlesuit to the team's new member, Maria Nagisa. Following the casting challenges for Miss America, Toei's team ran into another problem with Ego's commander, Heather. Kenji Ushio, who was initially cast to play the role, ran into personal issues that required dropping out of the program early into its shooting schedule. This resulted in the shuffling of the show's production and editing around his appearances in the first few episodes of the series until actor Masashi Ishibashi could fully take over the role. Kenji Ushio's commander header only appears in episode 4 of the series due to Masashi being a guest in this episode, which was recorded prior to the former dropping out of the series. In addition to these, the production would run into one more casting change that would need to be written into the show's storyline. Actor Yukio Ito, who plays the role of Battle Cossack, requested to be released from the production to focus on getting married. This change was written into the series' 33rd episode, Cossack Dies for Love, which features Battle Cossack's final battle and defeat at the hands of Ego's forces. The character would be avenged and replaced in show by Makoto Jin, the new Battle Cossack. Makoto was portrayed by Daisuke Ban, who by this time was well known for playing the role of Kikaira, Inasman, and Fire Ninja Captor 7. And like Jack Ka, Battle Fever J's early episodes had a slightly dark tone to them which came through Ego's episodic plots. For example, in episode 2, Fang Lion takes advantage of innocent civilians to carry out assassinations based on the wishes of his victims. In episode 5, Ego's plot to uncover the secrets behind Battle Fever Robo forces information supervisor Sakaguchi to blow himself up in order to protect this ultimate weapon, leaving behind his two young children. But unlike Jacka, there is an earlier pivot towards lighter storylines. This includes adding more humorous situations, scenes of the Battle Fever team having fun, and pivoting Ego's plans towards surreal schemes. These included plans to steal kids' pets, brainwashing people by making them eat golden eggs, and making people get sick by eating escargot. 
Despite these and other problems that surfaced due to short timelines the production team had to work around, Battle Fever J delivered exciting and fun to watch episodes throughout its 52 episode broadcast run. This helped set the stage for the next TV series to inherit its time slot, Denji Sentai Denji Man, and reignited interest in a format that Go Ranger first pioneered in 1975 and would eventually come to be known as the Super Sentai series. In 1975, Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger became a massive success for Toei and its production and merchandising partners. The show was so popular that it was anticipated that it would become the company's next long-running tentpole series, replacing Kamen Rider. But when the next series, Jaka Dengeki Tai failed to capitalize on its predecessor's success, those ambitions quickly faded. By going back to the five-member team format, and blending in Spider-Man's transforming hero with a giant robot framework, Battle Fever J found a way to re-spark the magic of Go Ranger for a new generation. And while it lacked many of the elements we associate with the Super Sentai series today, like consistent uniform designs, bright colors, unique looking personal vehicles and signature weapons, the foundation was there to build from through the next series of programs. In spite of the challenges it had to overcome, Battle Fever J and Battle Fever Robo opened a new path for the Super Sentai series and ensured this new franchise would be entrenched in popular culture the same way Kamen Rider, Ultraman, and the Super Robot genre were. Poppy's Battle Fever Robo led the series' merchandise sales across toy stores in Japan, from its classic Chogo King figure, which was packed with accessories, to a robot factory jumbo machinder figure that measured around 60 centimeters in height. Poppy also distributed multiple versions of Battle Shark, which allow fans to replicate scenes from the program where the giant carrier will launch from the underwater base and deploy Battle Fever Robo to counter Ego's giant robots. Other merchandise included various types of action figures, battle receivers, and vinyl records of the program's songs. And like Go Ranger, Battle Fever J's popularity led to the series being exported to international TV markets, including Hawaii in the United States and the Philippines a few years after the series' original broadcast. And due to the series being a co-production between Toei and Marvel, Battle Fever J is recognized as Earth 79203 in the Marvel Universe. This would be the second Earth co-created by the companies, with the first one, Earth 51778, being the home to Toei's version of Spider-Man. As part of the 1979 Toei Manga Matsuri event, episode 5 of the TV series, The Great Robot Dogfight, was blown up for a limited theatrical run. After wrapping up its television broadcast run, the Battle Fever team would continue making appearances at stage events and media publications alongside its successor series. They would also resurface from time to time on various TV programs and films. The first of these was a small Easter egg-like appearance by Battle Fever Robo in the form of a blueprint for a new weapon in episode 44 of Sun Vulcan. On the Super Sentai series 10th anniversary, the Battle Fever team was featured in a special TV episode that introduced the 1989 Super Sentai series, The Great Gathering of Ten Sentai, Counting on You, Turbo Ranger. In it, Battle Fever joins the other recognized Super Sentai teams during this period, and a short summary of their battle against Egos is presented. Next, they will be featured in a short segment during Time Ranger's 51st episode. In it, the Time Rangers travel back to each of their predecessor's eras to see them in action. This include Battle Fever's era. Fast forward to December 2011 and Kaisoku Sentai Go Kaiger's 44th episode, A Lovely Christmas Eve. In this Christmas theme episode, Luca has a run-in with Shiro who is dressed as Santa Claus, which later in the episode 
is followed up by Gokaider transforming into the Battle Fever team. The story concludes with Battle Kenya recognizing the Gokaider team and entrusting them with Battle Fever's great power. The Battle Fever team would also resurface in several movies, including the 2011 film Gokaider Gosager Super Sentai 199 Hero Grand Battle and 2012's Kamen Rider Super Sentai Super Hero Tizen. In 2011, Ego's henchmen became part of Combined Combat Man in Kaisoku Sentai Gokaider the movie The Flying Ghost Ship. Battle Kenya would resurface again in 2012's Kaisoku Sentai Gokaider vs. Uchu Keiji Gavan the movie. This would be followed by a few guest appearances by Battle Japan, including Kikai Sentai Zen Kaider the movie, Red Battle All Sentai Rally, and Saver plus Zen Kaiger Superhero Senki. Despite initial challenges and the shadow of its predecessor's underperformance, Battle Fever J rekindled the spark of success through its innovative blend of transforming heroes, giant robots, and an international team dynamic. The series not only reinvigorated the Super Sentai format, but also paved the way for a legacy that transcended its original run.